37 years ago, the legendary John Carpenter, the man who directed Halloween and so many other horror classics, was actually set to direct the original 1984 Firestarter, but he was replaced, listen to this, when his 1982 movie The Thing, which is considered a master class in suspense and tension, flopped at the box office back then, okay? So, however, he, even though he did not direct this new remake, he is the hero, in my opinion, of this movie, and the reason I did not turn the TV off, because he composed all of the music, and it is spectacular. He, after all, created one of the most recognizable horror scores in Hall with Halloween, so it goes without saying he knows what he is doing. And the score for this one is very 80s, is very synth wave, which is my favorite kind of music, but it also fits the material really well. All right, so let's begin. Unless you live under a rock, you know what this movie is about, but just in case you don't know, here's a quick side cliff notes. So after being experimented on by a secret government entity called The Shop, Andy McGee develops psychic powers and meets the love of his life. Together they have a daughter, Charlie, with a power of her own, and The Shop will stop at nothing to get them back. So this movie is based on a Stephen King novel of the same name and a remake of the 1984 movie that stars a very young Drew Barrymore who was great and I believe it was her second uh, movie after E.T. Now this remake feels very similar to the original. A few small details are different like the addition of the mom character and Charlie uh, not only having her fire starter power, but also telepathy and telekinesis, which she got from her parents. Now, the problems I have with this movie will be very obvious to anyone. Uh, the problem, in my opinion, was the budget. It was reportedly made for only $12 million, and that's a good amount of money for horror movies, but it's just not enough for a movie that deals with having super powers which we want to see okay so for example the mom had the powers of telekinesis and the way they showed her powers was very silly and very amateur and charlie's powers were also a little bit amateur looking but for some reason I, I liked how it looked i thought it was creative but for someone who is supposed to be blowing up things and create lots of uh, fire with her mind this movie did not portray it very well and that is uh, that's the money maker right that is the use of her powers and their powers is what you the audience wants to see most that's what attracts you to this movie that is called firestarter and they pretty much failed only one scene was powerful enough to get the point across of how powerful her 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 power is and it's very early on in the movie when she blows up a bathroom stall. I enjoyed that sequence, but I wanted to see more like that, and we really never did. Now, the visual of the powers were terrible, but again, John Carpenter and his team made the powers have a little bit more impact in the movie by the sound that they make when the characters use them. So again, John Carpenter and his, you know, his expertise with this kind of movie uh, kicked in and it helped deliver those moments a little bit better. Otherwise, the way it looks is not enough. So really, what it comes down to is the budget. If the movie had more money, it would have, one, gotten better actors, and no disrespect to Zac Efron, but he might need to get a new agent because he has no business being in this movie. This is almost a B movie. Uh, it's it's pr It kind of speaks to itself that the movie was released not only uh, simultaneously on theaters, but also to stream. It, it's just not a great movie at all. It's a very B movie, okay? And also, and I don't want to be mean, but he needs to stop with the face work because he looked very plastic a lot of the time and he looked like too cool, not at all like a real dad. He was a total miscast for this role, okay? And number two, the effects were terrible. The CGI 
was just not up to par. They even had <laughs> they even had a mechanical cat that they used when Charlie uh, was kind of practicing on her own. She burned this cat alive. And this is supposed to be a pivotal scene in the movie that shows her learning and understanding her powers and its consequences. But instead, I was laughing at the bad robotic cat. Uh, he reminded me a little bit of uh, the cat uh, Salem uh, from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So you can imagine how low budget that cat looked. But anyways, uh, moving on to the things that I liked other than the music, which I already said, I enjoyed the little girl who played Charlie. Her name is Ryan Kira Armstrong, and she had her moments uh, where I saw a lot of strength in her performance, and she had good chemistry with Zac Efron, and that really helped to sell the story and move it forward and for us and for me to keep watching the movie. And the last thing that I liked was the character of Rainbird. I really liked his arc and I liked the closing shot of him holding Charlie by the hand and walking uh, away and kind of now becoming her father figure slash mentor. That really intrigued me and made me sad that it was the end because that's a story that I like to see. I would have loved for them to explore that more. Maybe they're hoping for a sequel. I don't believe that's ever going to happen. But that story would have been great to see uh, explored more. So in the end, uh, I believe this would have been a material better served as a TV series and not a movie, especially since it's out on Peacock. Instead of giving us a movie, make it a series. Give your viewers a reason to stay on the app on your new streaming service by having uh, something longer to watch and more to dive into than this really short take on the 1984 movie. So I leave you guys with that. I'm curious to know your thoughts on the comments below. Uh, please subscribe. It'll mean the world to me if you do because I'm, I'm really doing these videos uh, as much as I can. I love doing this and I want to get your input on what I can do better. And by subscribing and having a conversation with me, that would help me out a lot. So again, guys, I am Frank Javier and I am signing off.